I welcome you to my yet another video about Power Tools. In this video, we are going to take a look and actually review, hastily review and test Vevor welding machine of type MIG-250, which can be bought off Vevor.com website. Uh, what is the quality of the accessories? What is the real current and therefore welding power? How long will it manage to weld before overheating? And are the duty cycle claims truthful? Will this welding machine survive some heavy duty? And which circuit breakers will it trip and which not? I am Jiří Becker and I work as industrial electrician, but I am also a hobby welder with few kilos of either wire or electrodes already spent. So this review is gonna be more from the electric side, which uh, welding machines are an electric instrument. <laughs> <laughs> in the inside and also from a viewpoint of someone who already knows some basic stuff about welding and has actually used the machine prior to this review. There is actually many videos on Vevor welding machines on the YouTube, but many of them were just a guy who had used a welding machine for the first time in his life and well, while I am glad that he made it to learn something new in his life and learn welding <laughs> I don't think that people who don't know anything about welding or don't know anything about the topic uh, they are talking about should do any sort of these videos. And the videos from professionals, they are okay for sure, but they haven't tested the welding machine thoroughly and failed to mention and maybe even notice some major issues that you are going to face and have to deal with with this welding machine. Every welding machine requires some user input and every welding machine requires some adjustments. This machine being for hobby DIY, it needs to have all these things mentioned in the review because a hobby DIY guy like you probably is not going to figure out what he needs to buy, uh, for example, a different wire feed roller or different 1025 connectors, etc. And these are only few of the things we need to take care of which are nowhere written, which are nowhere to be seen, and this experience is nowhere to be gained. So consider this video the ultimate guide for Vevor MIG-250 and also partially for other 3-in-1 machines uh, for anyone who would like to begin welding. Well, there is actually few good quality videos and although they don't mention everything that's needed to be mentioned, for example what you will face, uh, they are still okay quality reviews but they are either american videos and usa has different welding machines because of power grid or they have european welding machines there but the reviews are in german and not many people understand german language i mean apart from germans and austrians of course because of copyright i cannot use parts of foreign videos so i had to professionally recreate some of the german videos Es ist ein Schweißgerät von Weber. So if you are European and looking for a welding machine, maybe your first MIGMAG welding machine, stay tuned. This machine is fully manual with split controls for voltage, for current and wire feed. Therefore, when switching between MAG an electrode, we don't need to readjust the voltage or current every single time. In MAG mode, the welding machine is not synergic, so we control voltage and wire feed speed separately. I actually couldn't get it right until I figured out that there is feeding problem, which can be easily fixed and more on that later. Uh, this rectangular button is for forced wire feed at maximum speed of the motor inside. It is very useful so that we wouldn't waste gas feeding new wire to the torch, because the cable that leads to the MIG torch is actually 3 meters long, which is enough for like almost any welding job you will ever do and it is good that it has 3 meters length, but it also takes some time to feed the wire through it if you are just priming your wire uh, with a new spool and such, so this button really helps. Why is it 4 tact uh, and not 2 tact? Which means, why do you press it and it keeps feeding and feeding and feeding and then you need to release it and between uh, the time uh, you waste like this amount of wire, why is it so? 
Why isn't it just push to feed, release to stop feeding? So this button is really great. Some welding machines, uh, for example, have such feeding button near uh, the feeding mechanism. Some machines doesn't have this at all. Uh, what is not that great about this welding machine is these connectors. Uh, they may seem to be standard 1025, but they are Chinese version of 1025. I wouldn't actually mind it if it was backwards compatible with the standard 1025, which it is unfortunately not. I wanted to try full power of this welding machine with my 35 mm squared uh, welding cables, but as you can see, I cannot lock the connector in. I can't lock it in. No way. How so? These are the connector plugs that we have on the cable. This is standard 10-25 and this is Chinese 10-25. As we can see, <laughs> they are significantly, it is significantly smaller. It's smaller also as this. But there is a problem. The normal 1025 has much more massive lock or pin or whatever. I don't know the English term for this. And it is significantly longer. It is longer by, I don't know, three millimeters approximately. And this length difference may be a problem. While you can use both connectors, the Legacy 1025 and the Lightweight 1025 in almost any machine, any, for example, European machine. Unfortunately, here you can't. This is the Chinese one, the lightweight. Can be turned easily and locked. This is the standard. No, won't move. There is not enough space behind uh, this connector, so you can't put longer than 25 plug in there. It's not uh, deep enough. The supplied 1025 connectors are this lightweight type, which I wouldn't actually mind because, well, okay, either way they are aluminum wire, so I don't mind the lightweight version of 1025 connectors. But the sockets on the machine, they are made only to fit the shorter ones, the lightweight ones, and the longer ones, standard ones, they won't fit. They collide with the tightening bolt that goes from the inside of the welding machine. So if you would want to use some custom cables, which you would want sooner or later, you need to change these sockets, which is actually not that difficult job and anyone can do this. Uh, this incompatibility was not mentioned by any YouTube reviews I have found on this welding machine. And I think that this must be known to potential customers so that they would avoid problems and know how to solve them efficiently. Needless to say that Vevor is not the only company that has uh, these lightweight sockets that won't just allow me to plug standard 1025. They are not alone. Uh, I've been in contact with one serviceman who services welding machines and he says that uh, amongst the hobby welding machines, this is unfortunately quite normal phenomenon. So if you have any hobby welding machine, make sure it fits the standard 1025s. And if it doesn't, uh, then change the connectors. They are easy to change. You can buy them. You can buy them like this. Just ensure that they would fit the long version and you can just change them. And I would recommend to do that with any hobby welding machine of even different brands if they have these not so deep sockets. In the back we have a power switch, which is of rocker type. We have a gas inlet where I have this connector, a Euro style connector for not air from compressor, but a, a Corgon mix. And there is this cable, which is two meters of three times 2.5 millimeter squared wire which is okay, absolutely okay. Let's look at what you get in the package, which is quite rich for a DIY welder. This is not everything you see here. <laughs> Welding cables. Uh, the 1025 plugs are the short lightweight Chinese type, just for demonstration purposes, lightweight type and fully sized type. Yeah, so this is the lightweight one, of course, because otherwise it wouldn't fit the welding machine. <laughs> so they are the short Chinese type, as we have just seen, which would be enough up to 
150 amps or so so like 0.8 millimeter maguire or two and a half millimeter electrodes they will be okay which is the most commonly used dimensions for these but i wouldn't go higher or at least higher for longer periods of time for uh, heavier duty welding as there is just too little contact surface the faceplate of the welder is fortunately made of steel as we can see it's magnetic which i like because uh, after, for example, 10 years of hastily welding with such a machine, these sockets may wear out and they would begin to melt, which they usually do after time. It doesn't matter whether you have a professional welding machine or if you have a hobby welding machine, they will eventually wear out and they will begin to melt. It happens with all welding machines if you weld with them hastily enough. So if this would happen to this machine, then it's no problem because this is steel and steel doesn't melt at the same temperature as plastic does so you just change these connectors after like 10 years or 15 years what is a problem are welding machines with plastic faceplate because then the faceplate itself melts and you would <laughs> need to make a new faceplate out of some sheet plastic or uh, whatever pvc something <laughs> which is very difficult so these uh, plugs, they are enough for these 120, 150 amps. Okay. What is unfortunately not so okay, and I would advise on changing, definitely change that, is the insulation. Change the insulation for a harder one. Not because of bending. Bending will be okay because it would then release the pressure that is applied to the cable itself. But what is the problem here is that this is too soft that it slips. It turns the inner thing, the plug, the brass thing, slips inside of the housing, the rubber housing. As you can see, now it is it's not even right. Let me demonstrate. Now it is locked, but I can still turn it round. Boom, 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 boom. Not so nice, if you ask me. Once more. Ah, and we are at the right place. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I would advise to change this insulation for a harder one. Just buy new insulation for these or a complete plugs. They are very cheap, like four dollars for a set, approximately. They are dirt cheap. Cable, it may look like copper, but it is definitely not copper. It's aluminum that has been copper coated. This practice is normal amongst DIY welding machines, and actually, for example, Parkside welders come with the same cable, 16 mm squared aluminum copper coated wire. Uh, these are most common in hobby DIY welding machines. They are cheap, but somehow work. They will work for some time. If they would supply a proper, like 16 or 25 mm square cables uh, made of copper, the welding machine set would be like 10 to 20 dollars more expensive. So. In my opinion, it's even better to cut the price on accessories because accessories can be changed for better than if they would cut the price on the machine itself. Uh, the cables are two meters long, which is on the shorter side as the optimum is often three meters, at least for me. Uh, but two meters is still usable and most DIY welding machines are supplied with two meter aluminum cables so nothing special here but is somehow better than average is the pliers or holder the electrode holder has somehow okay massive base and all the standard electrode positions and i would personally trust this electrode holder with even currents about 150 amps let's see the inside it's made of sheet metal it's steel which it unfortunately usually is because it's cheap but the steel is like 1.5 or 2 millimeters thick and it's copper coated of course so this may actually survive some 150 amps approximately should work so two and a half millimeter electrodes will it will run just fine for sure the grounding clamp is a basic model, but this particular construction is well known to be extremely cheap 
and very reliable. If you are about to make new grounding cables, you wouldn't make a mistake with these even for 200 amps. They are very capable. The only thing, the only thing to take care of is this inner connection. This clamp has double contacts. It's copper coated steel again <laughs> and they are connected with flat braided wire which is again copper coated aluminum but the problem is its length it's short i have like two sets of welding cables custom welding cables for example these high current ones and you can see i have put much longer it's copper it's nickel coated copper and it's much longer why because it has happened to me that I was welding on a construction. This is 40 by 40 millimeters square tubing. And you can actually yank, <laughs> you can yank the, the interconnection out of its place because it's very short. Yeah, so this may happen to you that you will just disconnect it from here. So I really recommend getting a new braid and longer one. And if you are at it, I would buy copper not aluminum but aluminum here will hold for some time length is the worst problem than the material i would say so the cables they are good start i would recommend getting the insulation for like three four dollars or so and maybe changing the braided wire and then you have okay cables slightly shorter and up to 150 amps they are absolutely okay they are they will hold few years of light duty welding or uh, one year of normal use approximately. And when you have free time, you can make your own welding cables according to your needs. Oh, and you can utilize the clamp and the electrode holder as they are both quite good and they will outlive the rest of the cables for sure. The MIG cable is the strong side of this welding machine, as you wouldn't get such a good MIG cable with almost any DIY welding machine as far as I know. The MIG cable is usually very expensive itself and I am glad that Wevor has shifted the budget the way that you wouldn't need to change this at all and may keep using this for like almost eternity. Well, it's made with very good quality. The length is three meters, which is above average as we usually get to two and a half meters. And three meters is usually enough for everybody. And sometimes it's enough even for some industrial applications. Well, you would say, but at work I have four meters. Well, four meters, yes, it's better than three meters. But keep in mind that the wire feed mechanism here is the basic one. And with four meters, uh, torch you would need a different much chunkier and also much more expensive wire feed mechanism so three meters is the maximum for this welding machine and it's absolutely okay for almost everybody and for every diy hobbyist the euro connector is a nice chunk of shiny brass as it should be the housing is a little little flimsier you can take a look inside and make sure that the cable inside is actually pure copper yes there is pure copper high power wire leading the welding potential to the torch to the contact tip so this cable is already good for long term use the torch is the most standard standard torch <laughs> everywhere as a mic torch can get <laughs> it's a chinese copy of abicor binzel mb-15 which is the leading brand in mic torch world uh, the gas nozzle is standard type so whatever welding store you visit they will have this gas nozzle for mb-15 and it will fit your vivor torch the wire contact tip is the same standard Abicor Binzel MB15 and the brass adapter too. These are the only parts you will ever have to change. These three. Gas nozzle or gas shroud is both put off or on by right turning. Uh, the contact tip is standard M6 thread. Let's use these pliers. But beware, uh, if you would want to change the brass adapter, uh, then the thread here is left Yeah, so this is standard right thread Righty-tighty 
Clefty Lucy, but this one is exactly opposite. I was once yanking my adapter out of the torch and I almost destroyed the entire torch because I didn't know this. So yeah, this is left thread, this is standard right thread. Keep it in mind. A word of advice, always have some spare contact tips for your diameter of wire you are running and also some spare gas shrouds. And second word of advice, if you are planning on running flux core and flux core would be of 0.8 to 1 mm, this doesn't, it doesn't apply to 0.6, yeah, but it applies to 0.8 or 1 mm flux core. The thin MB15 tip may overheat and may fail prematurely due to overheat. It will begin bluing, it will be blue, it will change colors, it will be purple, blue, everything, and it will fail very soon if you would run a flux core by kilometers of wire just by heavy duty welding. They will wear out very quickly. So if you are running flux core 0.8 or 1 millimeter, you can buy contact tips for MB24 because Abicor Binzel has defined that MB15 and MB24 will have the same thread. It's M6 and it will fit also this torch, of course. So I take out this MB15 tip, which is thin. And if I would weld flux core, then I can put on the thicker one, MB24 and it will survive the heavy duty flux core welding much easier. But keep in mind, if you use MB24 welding tip, then uh, the nozzle for flux core would not fit on the torch. So you need to stick to using the standard MIGMAC uh, nozzle. Uh, also, I would advise against using the more massive MB24 tip for gas welding, uh, MIG or MAC, because it is thicker and it may restrict airflow, airflow or gas flow out of the nozzle. Well, now it wouldn't uh, be such a problem, but after some time of welding, uh, there is debris that gets in there and it may clog. It may clog much easier with these that are thicker. So the MIGMAC cable slash torch is really great and it will serve you well for years to come and you will always be able to find spare parts even after 10 years, after 20 years, maybe even after 30 years, after you are an old grandpa, you will find spare parts for this standard of MB15AK. What is also supplied is TIG torch and there is no Wolfram electrodes unfortunately and either way I don't have pure argon bottle so we won't be trying TIG. It's a very fancy method of welding that finds use only for certain types of stainless steel or aluminum welding. For steel welding and even more DIY hobby steel welding TIG would be an expensive overkill. In my opinion they could have tossed the TIG torch out and use the saved money on better quality cables for electrode welding and for grounding. Uh, but on the other side, if you would come across an argon bottle, just get yourself a Wolfram electrode and you are free to start TIG welding and learn something new possibly. Let's see the other accessories. For gas welding, MIG Mac, we have this hose. It's nice, rugged one, with this reinforcement, so I like it, and you will get three meters of this holes, which is enough for two welding machines. So they supply enough holes for, <laughs> for setting up two welding machines. Yeah, so absolutely okay. Uh, then we have this piece of junk. <laughs> it's really junk. It's supposed to be welding goggles, but <laughs> I wouldn't use that. I like my eyes. I really like my eyes. So I will not use this for welding. The overall quality of the welding machine and the accessories is okay, but this degrades it and they could save money on this. Then we have a spool, one kilo spool of what? Of flux core wire. 0 0.8 millimeters, so it's the absolutely most normal thickness and it's one kilo spool, good for starters. Then we have this uh, slug hammer slash wire brush. I wouldn't trust this for 
three beads and more. But okay, <laughs> it's, it's inside. And we have the manual. The manual can be downloaded online, so feel free to download. It's online, great. And we have some small accessories. We have some spare contact tips. We have this wrench that ah, I would advise on getting these pliers. They are really great for MIG welders or MAG welders. Yeah, get these pliers. They are super great. And we have this feeding roller. What is a problem here is that you get a feeding roller that is made for MIG MAG welding. Is it for aluminum wire? Yeah. Is it for steel wire, for mag welding? Yeah. Is it for flux core? No. Unfortunately, no. Uh, the other YouTubers also failed to mention this, but it is a problem that you would face after some time, after a few meters of spent uh, wire. Uh, this is most probably V or U groove. It's U groove. So U groove is best for aluminum wires. It also works with uh, steel wires for mag welding, but it won't work with flux core wire. Flux core wire compared to mag wire is much harder to bend and it needs some more force applied to it in order to feed properly. Uh, this welding machine has a very long MIG cable, which is okay, which is great, I love that. It's very long, I love that. But there may be a problem feeding flux core with U-groove roller because it would slip. So if somehow you will begin welding and you would be unable to set the balance between wire feed and between voltage, and it would then just and it would seem like the motor is like failing or there is some other thing failing in your welding machine. It is this thing. It's this rotor. Yeah, this is failing. So it's good for aluminum welding. It's good for MIG MAG welding. But if you would try to use the original flux core, please, please, please. Go to your local, uh, for example, welding shop or some uh, general tool store or online and get yourself spare roller with Z groove, with tooth groove. These are for flux core. They are dirt cheap and they are standard type. As you can see, it's a standard type. Absolutely the most standard thing you will ever get. So you can buy them even after 20 years, you will be able to buy them. It's the most standard, standard thing. So <laughs> just go to a store and buy yourself a new wire feeding roller with TT groove. And this TT groove will grip on the flux core like hell. And it will work just like a charm. And suddenly, your wire feeding problems will be gone. Uh, what is the worst option is that if some people encounter problems feeding their wire, they actually over tighten the springy thing in here. They may tend to over tighten this. And if you over tighten this, you will wear out uh, the bearings much sooner. It won't solve the root cause. It will only, only somehow smash it so it somehow works. Now let's test the current this welding machine is able to provide. Since now few chapters will be done as voiceover because I don't wanna record the same thing uh, in English and both in Czech. So it's recorded in Czech, the original footage, but you will have the English voiceover. So at 30 amps, we have 21 amps. Well, this is still a small current, so let's crank it up. Well, the current is very much off, but uh, thanks to the choke, which is in the welding machine, it's quite a big choke, we will see it in one of the next chapters. Uh, thanks to this choke, uh, we can somehow weld even on much smaller currents than recommended for this electrode. Yeah. 
Vaří to ale nic moc. Zkusím teda svářet aspoň, jestli to s tím půjde. Ne, 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 ne. Ten to stick, uh, but it somehow welds, but definitely isn't acting as a contact rotile electrode. Is it really contact? Yes, it is contact electrode. Strange. It sticks like hell. Yeah. Yeah, it welds, but nothing special. How much did it have? 90 amps. Uh -huh. <laughs> now it's welding, but it isn't contact at all. If I try to weld contact with this electrode, it just sticks, that's all. 200 amps is 112 amps? Well, that's nice. You, my electrode is red. Yep. And it's even became contact electrode. It's welding even when I am pushing the rod in the welding pool. How high is the current? Oh, I shouldn't have looked in there. Okay. So it welds nicely at 112 amps, which is more near the upper limit of this welding rod. Let's try even higher current, but I may not be able to short circuit the electrode as it would probably just keep welding. It's 100 amps less. <coughs> oh man, that's 100 amps less. Maximum. To je dobrý tohleto, to je fakt dobrý. Now let's do the circuit breaker test. So now B10 amps.
druhou elektrodu. It welds well. So B10 circuit breaker will allow you to weld 2.5mm electrodes, but not weld 3mm electrodes. Let's try B13 amps. I have run through a total of 3 pieces of 3.25mm electrodes and the circuit breaker was still on. Now the load slash duty cycle test. Here are the nominal parameters. Please apologize for the fans blowing because I didn't want to die in this garage so I needed to have three fans blowing air through the garage so you could see something and so that I wouldn't die here. Thirty six electrodes and thirty eight minutes later.
Now the welding sort of feeling test. First is basic electrode ESAP EB121. The electrode run pretty well and although I don't use these basic electrodes it somehow run much better than with some other machines actually. Well the weld looks nice. I don't I can't tell anything bad about this electrode. And now ESAP OK3630. This is universal electrode, it can run on any polarity and also AC, but don't weld on AC. And we will try on plus polarity first. We can see it did well just fine, just like any other rutile electrode. It burned well and the beat is actually uh, nice, beautiful and there is nothing bad to say about this electrode. Let's try the same electrode, 4630, on minus. The bead is significantly higher, so there is less uh, burn in into the metal. So when we run on minus, it seems to have worse burn in into the material compared to when we r run uh, plus polarity. Uh, the welding comfort is the same on both plus and minus. Now Lincoln Supra 2.5 mm, it welds on minus. Well, compared to the ESAP, uh, this Lincoln has much lower bead, so it seems like uh, the Lincoln is actually more burning into the metal than the ESAP, on both on minus, of course, compared. Slow wire feeding. It's not feeding almost at all. The rear door lock goes against the wire spool, so it seems like the maximum width of your 5 kilo spool is 5.5 cm, but mine is 6 cm, so I need to weld with door open. Oh yes, now we are welding, so the door lock was really breaking the wire spool. Let's try to crank it up and see if we can get spray transfer. Let's lower the wire feed. Now we are close to ball or BB transfer, I don't know the English term for this. 
So let's turn the wire feet even more down. Yep. As you could hear the hissing and the poof, 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 uh, this welding machine will give you bubble transfer or whatever it is called with 0.8 mm wire, but forget about spray transfer with 0.8 mm wire. Maybe with 0.6 it could get, I don't know. Let's try a classic short circuit. Mac, flux score.
ferocity. I may crank it a little down to see what it does. So let's try it. I may not be able to further fix this with lowering the voltage and wire feed, so let's increase the stick out. Increased stick out gives the flux inside some time to warm up and to heat up so that it would be already active when it begins to weld on the place of the wire. So 1.5 to 2 cm stick out actually does good for this wire. So the insides of this welding machine. Here we have the spool holder. Uh, I need to take this down and somehow do something with the bolt that is constantly trying to go inside. Then we have the wire fit mechanism. It's nicely tightened to the ground of the welding machine. Here we have the 1025 connectors. They can be easily changed for uh, the deeper type, for the more massive type. If you would also want to change the 16 mm squared aluminum wire, you can quite easily, although you could fit a branch here, you could, okay. So if you want to change uh, the cables, the aluminum cables for something made of copper, you are free to change it. Let's turn the welding machine. What do we have here? The power input is here, it's protected from bending. Here we have the protective earth straight on the chassis, as it should be. That's nice. They also marked it with this sticker, but it's upside down. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's also marked here. The input then goes to the switch, the live and the neutral. Well, in the Czech Republic, it's live and neutral because uh, we have reverse polarity uh, compared to French, uh, who originated uh, the socket. Uh, the switch is not backlit, but you can easily change it for backlit or if the switch would somehow break or anything, it's a standard type, you can find it everywhere, everywhere, standard switch. Then the live, also protected by insulation, goes to the board. Here we have a relay, most probably soft starter relay or something. We have three capacitors, each uh, 400 volts, which is enough, and 470 microfarad. Uh, here we have the cooling tubus. The cooling tubus is uh, from a 16 volt fan that is most probably fed at 24 volts to blow uh, harder. Uh, then the tubus is made tubular with this uh, plexi or plastic or whatever, so it really blows through the silicon tanks, which is the grads and transistors. Yeah, two, two and two. So here we most probably have the transistors driving the transformer and here we have some synchronous rectification that goes to the output. Here is a choke. The choke appears to be on minus. Yeah, choke is on minus. It's a nice choke, chunky one. It's okay. Uh, every uh, cable, well, yeah, almost every cable is protected by this sheath. Uh, it's a heat resistant sheet, so in case of fire or anything, these cables wouldn't most probably uh, somehow short circuit. Here we have a current shunt for measuring current, and this one is responsible for the welding machine to know what the current is flowing and to then regulate. The current shunt is 180 amps. Uh, these cables are the same that uh, you get with the welding cables, so they are 16mm squared aluminum, uh, copper coated aluminum, which for the currents 130-160 amps is okay, acceptable, but if you wanted to change them, 
you can. It's easy. Unscrew this, unscrew this, change the cable, screw in this, screw in that. Uh, here we have uh, temp protection, which is nice. And I also like the fact that they have separated uh, the hot air flow from the capacitors because capacitors really dislike huge heat. So the air heats up on the transformer drivers, on the grass rectifier, then further heats up on the rectification, the output rectification. Then the hot air blows through the transformer, through the choke, somehow around the motor and out of the machine, which is nice. The motor is quite massive, definitely worth it, the 3 meter uh, MIG torch, although for flux core <laughs> he may not like it, but it will handle it just fine. There is no protective sheath around the motor against uh, steel dust, which may or may not be problematic, although if you get a steel dust in your welding machine, it's already over for the electronics. So the motor, well, <laughs> it's magnetic. It attracts them. This is the control board. This is the driver board. Uh, here we have the potentiometers. Here we have the LEDs. They are on JST XH uh, 2.54 2 pin. <laughs> they are just <laughs> they are just crimped in. Okay, and here we have. A spare JST connector. So this board may be universal for the Bevor MIG 270 with burnback potentiometer. Probably. I like that all the connectors are glued so that they wouldn't disconnect during transport. Also during transport uh, the heat sinks which are massive and heavy they are protected by these legs which are screwed in to the chassis so that even if this machine would somehow fall from like half a meter, then the momentum of these heat sinks wouldn't tear anything out of the PCB, which is nice. That's all. What I need to do is I need to take the board out, which I don't look forward to because I need to uh, I need to put this down in order to somehow secure the bolt so that it wouldn't move. And I would also, in the future, after I have some time, change these connectors and maybe even the cables. But that's like all. Oh, and I may try to somehow uh, calibrate or adjust uh, some of the trimmers and see what I can do with the current reading. I don't need it to hit. 250. I just want the current to be as accurate as possible. So, to sum it up, as you have seen, the accessories are of valuable quality, but rather okay for basic hobby use, at least for the first year. Uh, the MIGMEC uh, torch and cable is perfectly fine for many, many years to come. The TIG torch, I have not tested that. As from the practical test, uh, we have seen that the current is not precise. It's actually, it has quite an error. So, take this value and multiply it by 0.56. So, the rule of thumb is divide this by 2. Half of this is the real current, which should be fixed. It should be fixed. And I think I am the only reviewer who figured out this phenomenon. We could also see that the welding machine has managed to weld for more than half an hour at the nominal current for 100% duty and it could handle it just fine and it didn't turn off only because my socket breaker tricked because it's an old communistic uh, battery socket breaker which is older than me, like twice as old than me <laughs> so, <laughs> so really that's not the fault of this machine, that's the fault of the old circuit breakers here in this house, which was built in the 1960s. Word of advice, if you would uh, use this machine for wire fed welding, uh, keep in mind that you can only fit 5.5 cm wide spools. You cannot fit 6 cm wide spools. So, how do you like this welding machine? It's a hobby welding machine. For a nice price, you get almost everything in the package. You get nice 3 meters long MIG torch, which is a huge plus. You get the thick torch, 
which is unusual. I want to thank the Weber company for sending me this unit for free, free of charge, and that they didn't dictate me what to say or what to do. So that's it for this video. Goodbye and see you in another video.